So hi, Julie. Hi. We're uh, speaking with Dr. Julie Holland. You are uh, in private psychiatric practice in New York City, right. but you've got a, a list of credentials and, and accolades as long or longer than my arm. And um, thank you. You've been here and you presented at the United Patients Group Medical Cannabis Conference this weekend. Um, one of the things I'm very interested in, you've written several books. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that springs to my mind that's most specifically at least uh, titled uh, and geared toward uh, cannabis in general is the pot book. Right. Okay. So tell us just a little bit about how that came about. So the pot book is a book that I edited. There's about 50 contributors, worldwide experts in various uh, fields of cannabinoid science. Okay. Um, and it's a nonprofit book where all proceeds fund clinical research with cannabis. I think that's fascinating. I, I noticed that about it. So where is that at at the moment? Or, or, or were they focusing on a specific area of how cannabis affects a certain type of an ailment or right. a disease? Okay, so tell us a little so bit about that. So the pop book re uh, primarily funds research uh, looking at whether various strains of cannabis, like high CBD or high THC strains, might be more helpful with people with post-traumatic stress disorder, looking at specific symptom clusters and their response to specific components of pot, like right. CBD or THC. I see. That's interesting. So, yeah, you've, your work with PTSD is pretty renowned. Tell us a little bit about what you're finding, uh, where you're seeing cannabis being effective, how, where... So there isn't any current ongoing clinical research. We've, the study is fully funded, set up to go. There's been a lot of um, roadblocks mm -hmm. uh, from the American government in, in allowing research to move forward. But most of those roadblocks have finally now been lifted. Okay. So the research, they are finally starting to recruit. And what we're looking for are veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder who are willing to take cannabis and see what it does for their symptoms. Well, it's interesting. This weekend, we also have a panel of uh, former professional athletes, right. as well as a, a, a former veteran police officer. And what we've been noticing is that a lot of uh, head trauma right. can actually uh, manifest itself with symptoms very similar to uh, uh, army vets or, or people that have been in the armed services who are uh, experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder. Are right. there some correlations there in your mind? Well, first of all, these veterans have more traumatic brain injury than any set of veterans before. So that's one. A lot of veterans are coming back, not only with post-traumatic stress disorder from being in that war zone, but also they're coming back with traumatic brain injuries. Um, but it is interesting what's going on with people... Um, who have uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. So they've had multiple brain injuries. Mm -hmm. For instance, a football player, mm -hmm. a boxer. Um, those people are getting some relief using cannabis. I mean, cannabis is a neuroprotectant. I mean, even the US government has to admit that it is a neuroprotectant because there's a patent out uh, which was obtained years ago, showing that that various uh, components of cannabis can be used as a neuroprotectant. So it's a very good fit. That's a mind blowing. Uh, well, this is you know Jeremy was talking about the sort of mm -hmm. our schizophrenic drug policy, and right. here here we have them saying that there's no accepted medical use, and yet they have a use patent on using cannabis as a medicine. And you can Google so, that. <laughs> Anybody that's right. watching this right now can Google the fact you know U.S. patent cannabis, right. and it's right there in black and white, which right. is really. It's, it, it makes anger rise up in me. Right. And it's I'm a, sure... Jeremy calls it the hypocrisy gap. The other hypocrisy gap is that pure THC capsules with no uh, CBD to sort of take the edge off or change the experience, pure THC capsules are Schedule 3. But the whole plant, with its entourage effect where it's milder, is in Schedule 1. So again, not logical, not scientific, totally based on politics, uh, corporate greed, and also xenophobia. I mean, our nation's drug policy has a lot to do with racism, and it came from racism, and that mm -hmm. is still very much there. I mean, if you look at the percentage of people who are arrested for uh, cannabis possession in New York City, 80% of the arrests are people of color. That's not the correct percentage of people who are using cannabis. Right. So there's right. a real racist component to our nation's drug policy. And that is, that is another thing we'd love to talk to both you and also uh, uh, Jeremy Wolf about is sort of the history of cannabis and, and the, uh, the prohibition that this country right. went into. But 
uh, it is it, it, it is uh, something that I think now is really finally coming to light. And so your work in in your psychiatric practice, you spent many, many years, I believe, in uh, the infamous Bellevue Hospital in right. New York City. And that also brought about a couple of your first books that you wrote, I believe, correct? And um, right. tell us, I mean, like... Did that also lend itself to you seeing, you know, uh, excessive use of narcotics or opiates uh, in dealing with people's uh, either traumas or their their already their mental illness? Right. Tell us a little bit about so, that. So um, from the mid-90s to the mid-2000s, I ran the psychiatric emergency room at Bellevue Hospital on the weekends, on Saturday night and Sunday night. And far and away, uh, the... The substance or drug which caused the most problem for my patients would be alcohol and cocaine. We saw, I mean, this was still sort of the, the heyday of crack. So we're right. still having a lot of people come in who are psychotic from crack or who are crashing and were suicidal coming down from, from right. binges of crack. And then just alcoholism. I mean, alcohol is neurotoxic. If you chronically drink high doses of alcohol, you will have brain damage. You don't see that with cannabis use. So what, what the hospitals are seeing now are problems with the synthetic cannabinoids, people taking spice or K2. Um, you know, cannabis in its natural form mm -hmm. is a partial agonist. It sort of sits on the receptor, but it doesn't sit so nothing else can go there. But when you take synthetic cannabinoids like K2 or spice, mm -hmm. it sits on that receptor and does not move. It's a full agonist. You have a different experience. You're much more altered. You're more psychotic. And what they're seeing in the city hospitals in New York City is that people who are buying synthetic cannabis in these bodegas are getting psychotic for days and days and days. And so it's not clearing. So this is literally clearing. something that you can walk in and buy. Yeah. Like you're going to get a bag of chips, maybe a Slim Jim, and you're going right. to pick up synthetic cannabis? Right. Well, and it's because of our nation's drug policy. You know, it's because of the repression of the natural herb that you have these more potent drugs available. And the other effect of our drug policy is the suppression of research, the suppression of knowledge. We, America is not where we should be in terms of, of cannabis research. I mean, we should be at the forefront of cannabis science research as we are at the forefront of many other areas of medical research. Instead, we're far, far behind Israel, Spain, Brazil, Prague, I could go on and on, I mean, even China. I mean, there are so many countries that have much more advanced cannabis research than we do who are seeing that it can be helpful in the treatment of cancer, mm -hmm. not just the side effects of chemotherapy, but the actual treatment of cancer. Right. Um, we don't have that data here in America because that research has been suppressed, it has been stymied, it has been roadblocked every step of the way mm -hmm. by National Institute for Drug Abuse. They have a mandate to look at the harms of drug use. There is no one funding looking at the benefits of right. cannabis, not in this country, but in many other countries for decades that research has been going on. But America won't accept uh, the research that's international. They're only looking for domestic research to help them decide their drug policy, but they're not allowing domestic research. So it was a real catch-22, and it has to stop. Definitely has to stop. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's, 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 I'm still lingering on your <laughs> comment about someone can walk into a bodega or a right. convenience store right. and get their hands on something that could potentially put them into some sort of a psychotic episode or right. worse even. And so that's uh, a lot of what's coming out of the conference this weekend um, really feels like the exposure of the hypocrisy. There is a lot of hypocrisy. Of and how we're dealing with cannabis in general in this you know, country. One of the reasons why people are using synthetic cannabinoids like spice and K2 is that they don't show up on a drug test. I see. So for instance, it's very prevalent in the military. They get drug tested, but they want to have some sort of altering experience. So they're mm -hmm. using synthetic cannabinoids. I people see. who have jobs who don't want to test positive are using them. So there is this whole other issue of the drug testing industry, which is helping to drive drug policy. And a lot of our drug policy is profit driven. And it's, right. it's uh, there are corporate interests um, that are dictating the drug policy. And it should be dictated by science and right. by reality and by logic. And right now, none of those things are really happening. Right. Well, I thank you so much. I know that you have a, a new book out called Moody Bitches. Right. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about that. And I'm going to run out and get my okay. copy immediately. Right. Not so, that I um, identify with that title or anything. No. I'm, and I mean, look, the title is absolutely <laughs> meant to be a joke. It's, it's just meant to be a little bit funny and provocative. 
Um, I don't call my patients moody bitches. <laughs> the, the subtitle of the book is the truth about the drugs you're taking, the sleep you're missing, the sex you're not having, and what's really making you crazy. And the main idea of moody bitches is that women are naturally cyclical and that we have changes in our emotionality which have to do with changes in our hormonal levels. Mm -hmm. And that's normal and it's natural. And what's happening is that more and more women are taking antidepressants, anti-anxiety medicines, and antipsychotics to deal with uh, what are sometimes really natural responses mm -hmm. to their stressful lives or mm -hmm. stressful situations. Mm -hmm. So the book talks about things that you can do that, that uh, instead of taking psychiatric medicines, or if you absolutely need medicines, things you can do in addition to the psychiatric medicines that will make you healthier and happier. And I talk about cannabis and moody bitches because there really is a place, if, you're, if you want to adopt an anti-inflammatory regimen or an anti-inflammatory program, mm -hmm. which will help with depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. insomnia, obesity, cannabis is a potent anti-inflammatory drug. So if you're having an anti-inflammatory diet and you are doing stress reduction mm -hmm. and you are getting plenty of sunlight, um, and you're outside in nature, and you're also using cannabis. I mean, these are all things that can help to decrease inflammation mm -hmm. and help the axis between the gut and the brain work better and bring down symptoms of depression, anxiety, insomnia, and also obesity. That's fascinating, and I am definitely getting my copy uh, this <laughs> afternoon. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for supporting United Patients Group. My pleasure. And we hope to have you back again at our next conference. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. so much for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, bye.